at nine minutes past ten. Time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Here's a preview. I've just been on the visiphone to the computer center. Something wrong? Plenty. There's been a flash flood in the new Los Angeles River. But that's impossible. Try telling that to the relatives of the dead. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Congratulations to Mrs. Russell A. Young of Winfield, New Jersey. She is a winner of 100 New York State Lottery tickets, a $100 value. And it could give uh, Mrs. Russell Young another opportunity to win up to $100,000 in the New York State Lottery Grand Drawing. But keep in mind, it's only a chance, so hopefully they will have the luck of the Irish. Well, it all started when my son Willard said, Dad, you just don't understand how it is to be in my shoes. And so I said, Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll do what you do for a day, and I'll see how it is. Well, first it was great. I slept in till 20 minutes, too, like Willard does. But then after school, Willard told me... Um, the garage is dirty. Would you mind cleaning it up? And I told him... Um, I'll, I'll see, see about, about it later. Willard, and he said... Ah, 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 ah. You'll see about it all now. All right, all right. And so I did. Good but grief. I wasn't very happy about it. Well, after supper, I thought I might catch a little TV, but then Willard reminded me... Um, don't you have homework to do? Two things I know for sure. One is, I'm going to work harder to understand how Willard feels. And two... I gotta get Willard's shoes off. My feet are killing me. Listening, caring, and sharing. That's what understanding is all about. From the Mormons, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is Richard Widmark. In the year 2057, the dream of worldwide peace and prosperity has finally been fulfilled. After the energy wars at the turn of the 21st century, Opposing nations literally beat their swords into plowshares. Under the leadership of the World Council, the technology developed to eliminate mankind is now being used to heal the scars of war. The android soldiers are laboring in the fields and factories, and the computers designed to coordinate destruction now work on the problems of survival. And that brings us to the most important technological accomplishment of the past 200 years. The scientific breakthrough that has changed the way of life of every human being on this planet. And a very special documentary commemorating this great achievement is being produced at this moment in a very unusual locale. Derek Wong reporting today on the 10th anniversary of Zeus 5, the World Council's weather modification computer. Since civilization began, humans have been at the mercy of harsh, uncontrollable weather. Today, thanks to Zeus 5, we are its master and are now entering what will surely be remembered as the golden age of mankind. Outside this protective canopy, rain falls in a lush green jungle that was once barren desert. Today we'll be discussing Zeus and taking a look at modification projects such as this one. This is Derek Wong reporting live from the South Sahara Rainforest. A weather modification computer. Now there's an advance. The golden age of mankind is how the young man put it. But let me ask you something. Did you ever know a computer that didn't make a mistake? And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Wrath of Zeus, by Bob Borgen and Steve Sharon. Our stars, Mary Jane Croft, Vic Perrin, and Stephen Keats. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where value is your byword. Sears, where America shops for value.
What's the best way to save on new clothes? Sew them. Start by saving $40 on a Kenmore sewing machine at Sears with a convertible free arm for narrow sleeves, cuffs, and legs, a built-in buttonholer, even six stretch stitches. This free arm Kenmore, just $199.95 and save $30 on a wood veneer sewing cabinet. Sale ends March 31st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Put together a whole wardrobe with the classic collection separates at Sears. Now you can buy the pants to a suit, the vest to a suit, and the jacket to a suit separately. So every well-tailored piece of the outfit you buy is geared to your size and build. You can create a more casual look with solid color blazers and patterned slacks, or patterned sport coats and solid color slacks. The colors coordinate to let you mix and match. Now that's style, sense, and satisfaction. The classic collection at most larger Sears retail stores. Strawberries, stoneware with hand-painted strawberries, 45-piece set plus extra serving bowl, Sears Strawberries. Sears hand-painted strawberry stoneware has delectably sweet country looks, and durable, this dishwasher-safe stoneware resists chipping, cracking, or fading, even when exposed to your oven, freezer, or microwave oven. Enhance your table with these pretty strawberries from Sears. Strawberries, Sears stoneware with hand-painted strawberries. At most larger Sears retail stores. The Sahara. Over three million square miles of hot, dry mountains and endless sand dunes. Here in the world's largest desert region, it was not uncommon for temperatures to rise as high as 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And because the rainfall was so inadequate, the plant life was limited to those capable of seeking out the scarce moisture, or to those with the ability to resist drought indefinitely. Of course, in the year 2057, things are a bit different. Derek Wong, reporting live from the South Sahara Rainforest. And with me today are Dr. Judith Wells, Chief Administrator of Global Climate Control, and Dr. Isaac Chadway, the Zeus 5 Project Director. At Dr. Wells, it appears weather-caused disasters are now a thing of the past. Food production has increased enough to eliminate world starvation and allow us to abandon our previous dependency on synthetic foods. Yes, We've sir. solved our energy needs with wind, solar, and hydroelectric power. When this project first began, could you foresee that in 10 years we would have made the phenomenal progress we have? <laughs> I'm glad to see I haven't gone down in history as the voice of doom. Uh, I don't understand. Perhaps you could explain? You're too young to have covered the story, so you may not remember. But 15 years ago, when the Zonal Environmental Utilization System, or ZEUS, as we called the computer, when that system was first being discussed, I was one of those opposed to the implementation of such a project. Well, why was that, Doctor? Well, at the time, I didn't feel we could guarantee what the long-term effects of altering the weather would be. But surely you've changed your mind after the success ZEUS has had. Well, it's only been ten years since we activated the system, so it's a little too soon to tell. But I must admit that Zeus has more than exceeded my expectations. And what about you, Dr. Chadway? I understand Zeus has become your pet project. You must be very proud. I certainly am, Derek. I think we've made some marvelous strides in the last decade. We're living in a new world now, and we owe it all to our modification program. Take this rainforest, for example. Yes, could you explain briefly to our audience the principle behind such a project? Uh, certainly. As you know, 20 years ago, most of the potentially arable land that was not farmed was in the tropical regions of Africa and South America. Now, in order to make use of that land and still maintain a balanced ecosystem, the jungles had to be cleared and relocated elsewhere on the globe. In this case, in the South Sahara. That's where Zeus comes in? Exactly. 
Once we understood the complexities of weather and climate, we could develop methods of controlling it, creating, if you will, the environmental conditions necessary to allow a rainforest to flourish where previously there was only arid desert. It's the thing that makes Zeus so awesome, is that the system is able to coordinate all the weather conditions around the globe, make the necessary calculations and adjustments, and provide what's needed. And with Zeus commanding a network of satellites, drones, and robots, we can can make changes at truly incredible speeds. Now we have our correspondents standing by at some of the other modification sites, so let's go to them for a report on what's happening on this, the 10th anniversary of Zeus 5. Stanley Hanover, what is the situation there in Alaska? I'm walking through the citrus groves here in Point Hope, Alaska where a way of life has changed for an entire race of people as a result of the modifications Zeus has made in the climate here. The orchards themselves are tended by Eskimos, a tribe once dependent on sea mammals for survival. In those days, this was a frozen wasteland, and their ancestors wore animal skins to keep out the cold. Now, seasonal clothing is a thing of the past, and these people are citrus growers instead of hunters. Nevertheless, the Eskimos still maintain their heritage and wear the traditional whalebone necklaces handed down from their forebears. Thank you, Stan, for that report from Point Hope, Alaska. I also want to thank Doctors Wells and Chadway for being with us today. And now we'll take a look at one of the solar satellites that powers Zeus 5. <laughs> This year, my mom is dressing me up in pretty things from the Sunny Bunch collection at Sears. That's right. She'll look fresh and feminine in these dresses and separates. I can choose from frilly, colorful dresses, bouncy skirts, pants, and just the right coordinating tops. Sizes 7 to 14 in easy care fabric that's machine washable. Whether I'm going to a birthday party or just school, my Sunny Bunch clothes make me feel special. You are special. Thanks, Mom. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. Up. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Up. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Now just $49.99 at Sears. The Craftsman heavy-duty one-horsepower router with carrying case. Save $44 from regular separate prices for power tool and carrying case that adds great versatility to your workshop. With the right Craftsman accessories, you'll be able to carve intricate designs on signs, doors, make dovetail joints for drawers, cabinets, and much more. Craftsman router with case. Now only $49.99. Save $44. Sale ends March 24th. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Okay, doctors, we're through. Thanks again for being on the program. Oh, our pleasure. And best of luck with Zeus. You're doing a fine job. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that's over with. I have never liked being interviewed. I rather enjoyed it. You always were a bit of a showboat. Uh, you seem to forget, Judith, that there wouldn't even be a Zeus Five if I hadn't drummed up support for the project on shows such as this. I'm not disagreeing with you, Isaac. All I meant was you're very good at this sort of thing. I'm not, that's all. I'm glad that reference to your past didn't upset you. Why should it? I'm not ashamed of my convictions. And I still feel the same way about weather modification. We're treading on very dangerous ground right now. Of course, the benefits look good today, but who's to say that our great-grandchildren won't have to suffer from our tampering with nature? Well, if you feel that negatively, then you shouldn't be involved in the project. On the contrary. Someone's got to provide a balance for your eager optimism. Mm. Are you coming back with me to the computer center? No, I've got to jet up to Greenland. Anything serious? Just a minor problem. I'll see you later. Everything all right, John? Oh, 
business as usual, Doctor. How did it go? Uh, the interview went fine, but well, you know how she is. Judith does tend to grate on the nerves. Frankly, John, I'm glad you're the liaison between climate control and Zeus. The less I have to do with Wells, the better. I just hope that she remembers that we're supposed to attend the commemoration ceremony down in New Atlantis. Uh, she didn't say anything to me about it. Probably forgot. You'd better stop off at the Greenland site and pick her up. All right. <laughs> has it been cloudy like this, Travis? Oh, a couple of days. It's not a problem yet. But just what is the problem? You've dragged me all the way up here and everything looks perfectly normal. Wheat looks healthy. Plenty of it. Well, that's just it. There's too much wheat. We've exceeded the anticipated crop, eh? I still don't understand the problem. That should be good news. Well, it would be if I had the silo to store the crop in. Look, all I do is plant the number of acres I'm ordered to plant. They told me they'd build the silos I need. Well, here it is a harvest time, and it's the old place to put the damn stuff. But this is out of my jurisdiction. You should be talking to general services or agriculture or even engineering, not climate control. I've done all that. I begged, I pleaded. I punched out request programs until I blew in the face, and I still haven't got my silos. Well, y What was that? What? Thought I felt a drop of rain on my arm. Impossible. It isn't scheduled, eh? You sure? Positive. Now, look, Dr. Wells, I've got drone combines and a load of androids due in here next week to harvest this crop. And if I don't get my silos... I thought you said it wasn't supposed to rain. It's not, and I've got the schedule in my office to prove it. That's one of our hovercrafts, but I don't recognize the pilot. It looks like one of my assistants, John Campbell. Dr. Wells, we're due in New Atlantis in less than an hour. Never mind that, Campbell. What about this rain? It isn't scheduled. Are you sure? Yes. Well, Zeus must be making an adjustment. Well, I wish somebody told me. Doctor, please. We're going to be late. What about my silos? I'll check it out, Travis. Hey, you forgot me. into the ocean. Well, at least it'll be dry down there. Be thankful the fabric and your clothing dried so quickly. Funny how Travis wasn't notified about the rain. Oh, it's probably just an oversight. I wouldn't worry. Ah, here we are. Have you got your speech ready? <gasps> My speech? John, I completely forgot about it. Well, you better think fast. You're the first speaker. <laughs> It's a great honor for me to be here tonight, not only because it's the 10th anniversary of the Zeus Five project, but also because it gives me the opportunity to express my gratitude and admiration for the people of New Atlantis. In the last five years, with the help of the dolphin civilization, we've progressed from those first tentative floating cities to great underwater communities such as this. We have, in short, made the first steps toward conquering a whole new world. And I think the real credit goes not to Zeus V, but to people like yourselves, the pioneers of the sea. None of this would have been possible without you. Citizens of New Atlantis, this is your day. Bravo! <laughs> What do you think, John? Not a bad job of improvising, if I do say so myself. I'm sorry I missed your speech. I've just been on the visiphone to the computer center. Something wrong? Plenty. There's been a flash flood in the new Los Angeles River. But that's impossible. Try telling that to the relatives of the dead. <laughs> Radio.
Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. It was an empty rooming house, midday. No one around but some mangy cats lazing on the stoop. It was good to be home. I've been chasing down high blood pressure. An accomplice to the big ones. Heart attack and stroke and an all-night spree. I'm Sam Hart, private detective. I climbed the stairs to the second floor, rounded the corner and froze. One door, mine, was left unlocked, standing open to the hall. I leaned on the door jamb, surveying the premises. The room was untouched. No sign of forced entry. Nothing missing. But it made me think of that character I was tracking last night. High blood pressure. The silent killer. You can't lock that one out. Never could. He's the relentless type. Hits without warning. Any time, any place, any person. The only protection is getting your blood pressure checked regularly. If it's high, you can nab this character in time with medicine and proper diet. To get more information, call my client, the American Heart Association. They're fighting for your life. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. Hush, hush, my darlings. Your mother is taking care of all of you. You have nothing to fear. Let those who move against us learn to cower in terror. As long as the moon is full, we rule the nights. Ours is the power and the glory. You will inherit the world, and I am your queen in whatever guise I choose to cloak myself. Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. An unexpected rainstorm in the mountains fills a river channel with an overflow of water. The sudden deluge flows swiftly downstream, the water building up, gaining momentum, until it forms a massive wave of uncontrollable energy. Without warning, a flash flood can turn a gentle, lazy river into a savage torrent, sweeping away everything in its path, trees, boulders, houses, and people. All right, Isaac, what happened? Everything's under control, Judith. The reports are all in. It seems there's been a rash of unscheduled precipitation all across the globe. Damages? Minimal. L.A. got the worst of it. What about casualties? None reported except in the Los Angeles Basin. 24 dead. Good Lord, how is that possible? This is the 21st century, and that's the kind of disaster Zeus was created to prevent. Now, look, Judith, don't go blaming the computer. Why not? Because it's your pet project. Oh, you'd just love to have an excuse to shut down this system, wouldn't you? All I want to know is who the hell's responsible. I don't know. We're just completing a check on the entire complex right now. So far, everything tests out normal. John, you'd better give them a hand. They can use you. Right, Doctor. I'm sorry for snapping at you, Isaac. I, I just want an explanation. I know, I know. I... I just wish I had one. Well, we'd better come up with something. Because you can bet the World Council is going to be demanding some answers. I can't understand it. This is the first time anything like this has happened in ten years. Somehow I don't think that's going to be much consolation to the council members. They've just finished the last test, Doctor. I'll punch up the results on the monitor. There. You see? The system is functioning perfectly. If it was functioning perfectly... 24 people would still be alive. Punch up the program analysis. This is the program of modifications as it was originally scheduled. And here's the program that was carried out. Why the discrepancy? I don't know. Unless... John, bring up the monthly precipitation schedule. They're identical. There's the answer. Zeus modified for a month's worth of precipitation to occur in a single day. We're just fortunate that it was the dry season in most of the affected areas. Then Zeus is malfunctioning. No, no. This was a human error. There's no other possible explanation. Campbell, I want a full report on my desk by this afternoon. 
explaining just how one of your highly trained technicians could have made such a mistake. You heard the lady, John? I'll see to it immediately, doctor. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry to have to bring you all the way to Tokyo, Dr. Wells, but it's been a while since the Typhoon Watch uh, has had to deal with something like this. Let's see what you've got, Benson. Uh, this monitor shows the position of two typhoons that have been developing out in the Pacific. The smaller one began forming late last night, and the larger one here early this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, naturally, we weren't too concerned. I mean, we all figured Zeus would take care of it. Uh, anyway, I made the routine reports to control. Well, they knew nothing about it. Typhoons weren't on the schedule. That is odd. Well, that's not all. Two hours ago, the small typhoon moved past the intercept coordinates. You mean without being dismantled? I checked. No robot interceptors have been launched. What about the big typhoon? 500 miles in diameter, moving at 40 knots, headed straight for Japan. I don't have to tell you what kind of damage a typhoon that size could do if it hits land. Well, it's not panic. Though I'd sure feel a lot easier about this if I knew why Zeus let the smaller one go past intercept. Well, the way I see it, we've got two choices. We can assume Zeus knows what's happening and leave it up to the computer. Or we can take matters into our own hands. Benson, on my authority, I want you to dismantle those typhoons yourself. How long before the large typhoon reaches the intercept coordinates? Mm, mm, three hours. All right. If Zeus doesn't act on it, we'll have to. Launch the robot interceptors, no matter what. Yes, Doctor. And Benson? Uh, better keep quiet about this, okay? Oh, yes, I understand. <laughs> We've got problems. No need to tell me. Where are you, Isaac? At the Tokyo jet port. I've got a tri-vane jet standing by. I'll meet you in the plane. Get over here right away. We're going to Madrid. But I've got an emergency. This is urgent, Judith. I'll be waiting. Why are we going to Madrid? Better yet, why are you here in Tokyo? Just a routine inspection. Wasn't my explanation of what happened yesterday good enough for you? Isaac... I don't need your permission to do my job. Since when is it your job to check up on me as if I were some kind of underling? I never said you were, in case you hadn't noticed. The weather is no longer under our control. We've got a crisis on our hands. I'm well aware of that. And so is the president of the council. He contacted Campbell at the center. The president wants us in Madrid now, and we're already late, so sit down. Where's the pilot? You're looking at him. I think you'd better hear my report, Isaac. Well, uh, let me set the autopilot. Okay. Now explain. The facts. Yesterday, the rains. Today, two typhoons in the Pacific. And Zeus let them go past intercept without dismantling. I understand in Windmill City, the winds are blasting through the Rockies at velocities of 300 miles an hour. Will you agree that Zeus is malfunctioning? I just can't understand it. I've checked the computer three times, and the system seems to be working perfectly. But something is wrong with Zeus. Yes. Then we have no other choice. I'm sorry, Isaac, but I'm recommending that Zeus be shut down. I'll... I'll have John do it as soon as we land. It's better if we do it now, before the public finds out about it. I see what you mean. There could be a panic. Everything we've worked for would be destroyed. Exactly. Now we're almost there. I'll disengage the autopilot. What was that? Just the guidance beam locking us in. Now we sit back and let Madrid pull us in. Well, I suppose the president wants to talk to us about Zeus. Campbell didn't say for sure, but he did seem pretty emphatic about our getting to Madrid on time. Looks like I'll have to disappoint him. We're five minutes behind schedule. Since when did John become such a stickler for punctuality? I was just... <laughs> oh, hey, coming in on this guidance beam is pretty rough business. Well, it shouldn't be. It feels more like turbulence. I I'd better check with the jet port. Madrid control, Trivane 620... Madrid.
Madrid Control, Trivane 620. That's funny. I had them on beam a minute ago. Isaac, look! My God, a tornado. It must have hit the jet port. Let's get ourselves out of here. I'm trying. It's getting closer. I can't break out of the guidance beam. We're being pulled right into the path of the tornado. Words out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're feeling fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. I'm out of control. Be cool. Be natural. Take it light. But where do I start? With the basics like the new Pretty Natural Light Shaper from Sears. The Pretty Natural Light helps keep you smooth all day under your clothes, giving you a shape that's soft and natural thanks to the shimmery lightweight power net. Never intimidates because its control is moderate with a front panel that helps keep your tummy where you want it. Great. I'll ease into control with a Pretty Natural Light. It's new at larger Sears retail stores. To look the height of fashion wherever I go requires many coats. But for home, I need only one coat fashion surrounding me. Sears Best Easy Living Interior Paint. One coat of easy living on the walls and every room looks stunning. Save $3 on every gallon. Choose from 25 decorator colors and easy living latex flat and semi-gloss. Plus bright white ceiling paint for your home. Because with Sears Easy Living Paint, it's one coat when used as directed. At most Sears retail stores, sale ends March 24th. Richard Widmark again. And here's the concluding act of The Wrath of Zeus. My God, we've been drawn straight through into the core of the tornado. Are we still locked into the guidance beam? No, no. Quick, fly us straight up the core. from the Global Climate Control Center, where we are awaiting the arrival of Dr. John Campbell, the acting director of GCC. Dr. Campbell is expected to make a statement regarding the recent weather-related disasters and perhaps offer an explanation as to the... Ah, Dr. Campbell is entering the room now, trying to make his way to the podium. What do you plan to do about the weather? Please, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please... I just have a brief statement to make. The exact cause of the weather disasters occurring worldwide today remains as yet undetermined. As soon as I leave here, I intend to meet with the World Council in emergency session to begin effecting the necessary changes to correct the present situation. On a personal note, I wish to express my regret over the death of Council President Ortega, who was killed in the tornado that swept through Madrid. I also wish to express my own personal sorrow at the loss of my two colleagues and friends, Dr. Isaac Chadway and Dr. Judith Wells, who are presumed killed in that same disaster. We all owe them our gratitude for what they accomplished. Thank you. Yes, but is it true that this has broken down the last one? Come on, answer my question. Judith, your quick thinking saved us. Well, we are just lucky the guidance beam pulled us through the tornado and into the core. The force must have snapped the beam's hold on us as we passed through the wall. I've seen the low pressure inside the core explode buildings. I shudder to think what would have happened to us if we hadn't been inside a pressurized jet. Any damage? Mm. The radio's out. We can't transmit. Well, what do we do now? I don't know. I don't know. 
We certainly can't land in Madrid, not with a jet port destroyed. Thank God we were five minutes late for that meeting. Mm. If we'd been on camel schedule, we wouldn't be here now. You know, that's beginning to bother me. John was very insistent that we arrive in Madrid on time. You don't think Campbell had something to do with that tornado, do you? All I know is that in another five minutes, we would have been sitting on the landing deck when that thing hit. We'd have been killed for sure. Isaac, we'd better head back to the computer center. If that tornado is any indication of what's going on around the world, I've got a feeling all hell is breaking loose. <laughs> On your monitor, you can see the earthquake that sheared part of Southern California off into the Pacific this morning. The monsoon. It's been raining in India like that for the past 30 hours. The Ganges River is flooded and Benares is under nine feet of water. This is the blizzard that struck Argentina and Chile. It's sweeping up out of the Antarctic. Australia and New Zealand are both catching part of another snowstorm similar to this one. This is what used to be the Hawaiian Islands when the tsunami hit. We're unable to verify reports concerning casualties, but we fear that the islands were completely wiped out. Good Lord, Campbell, do you realize what you've done? You and that, that, that monster Zeus? This is not the computer's doing. Millions of people are dead because we were fool enough to allow you people to tamper with nature. I, for one, demand that Zeus be destroyed immediately. Here, call yeah, yeah. yeah. Order, order. As acting president of this council, let me make it clear to you all that we are not here on a witch hunt. The purpose of these proceedings is to decide how we can repair the damage that has already been done. Thank you, Council Member Bouchard. If you don't want to be blamed for what has happened, Dr. Campbell, I suggest you come up with a plausible explanation for this catastrophe. Uh, I, I have no explanation for now, other than to say to you all, that the computer is not responsible. Not responsible? Are you insane, man? We've run an exhaustive check, and Zeus is functioning perfectly. If that were really true, then millions of people wouldn't be dead. I'm not saying that Zeus didn't create these disasters, but that the computer can only do what it's told to do. I don't need you to explain how a computer works, Dr. Campbell. Wait, wait a minute. Are you suggesting that Zeus was carrying out someone's orders? That it was programmed for this kind of destruction? I'm afraid it's beginning to look that way. <sighs> During the course of our test, we discovered that several unauthorized programs were initiated by Zeus. Who has access to the programming banks? Well, it, it, it could have been any number of the technicians working at the center. But only three people had the knowledge and skill to enable them to lay in a program of such complexity. I was one of them. And the other two? They're dead. Wells? Chadway? Dr. Campbell, are you saying that these disasters were deliberately planned by one of your colleagues? I'm afraid it looks that way. I've discovered some rather incriminating evidence at the computer center that I can show you later today. If what you're saying is true, someone has committed a crime of such colossal magnitude. Yes, and yet, and yet they've provided the means by which we can repair the damage that's been done. What do you mean? Zeus 5 is capable of the task. No! I'm against it! That damn machine practically destroyed us all! Right. Wait, wait, listen wait, wait, listen wait, to wait, me! Wait, Will you please listen to me? The weather patterns have been altered to such an extent that unless we use Zeus, we may be doomed to years and years of adverse weather. It's not too late to correct that. All I ask is that you give me the authority to try to overcome these problems. 
I can save us all. It looks as if we have no other choice. <laughs> Dr. Wells, Dr. Chadway, we thought you were dead. So did we, Sergeant. So did we. But how did you... There's no time to explain now. We've got to get into the computer. Where's Dr. Campbell now, Sergeant? He's in an emergency session of the World Council. Sergeant, listen to me. This is very important. If Dr. Campbell should show up while we're in the computer room, you're not to tell him where we are. Just let him enter. You understand? Yes, Doctor. And have your men standing by in case I signal for you. Do you know what it is we should be looking for? Mm, not exactly, but whatever it is, I'm sure we'll find it somewhere in the programming of the modification schedules. You check today's programs, and I'll check yesterday's. Right. All these schedules, perfectly normal. None of the programs could have possibly caused any of the disasters. Judith... I think I found something. Yes? What is it? I was beginning to think you were right. Everything looks normal until I stumbled on this. Program E1, restricted, Isaac Chadway, clearance, personal code. But I don't have any program restricted under personal code entered in the banks. Clear it and we'll find out. Look at that. There it is. A modification schedule programmed to override the normal daily schedule. Look at what he's done. The destruction he's unleashed across the globe. I can't believe it. Judith, do you realize John's made it look as if I'm responsible for all of this? By using your personal input code. And supposedly I'm the only one that knows it. There must be a way to prove you're innocent. Oh, wait a minute. I think this might be... Isaac. J Judith. Hello, John. I'm... I'm glad to see you're both alive. I, I can imagine. You, uh, both know Council Member Bouchard. Yes, we do. Uh, Dr. Chadway, as acting president of the council, I'm going to have to place you under arrest. Only you've got the wrong person. Right, John? I don't know what you're talking about. We found the program. Yes, the program. It's all there. Restricted under Isaac's personal code. A program of deliberate disaster planned to give you both unlimited power. Except that it's not my program, and it's you that wanted power. The trusted assistant, completely above suspicion. You played the part very well, but you were overconfident, premature. You should have made sure we really died in that tornado. Oh, you're insane. One of us certainly is. President Bouchard, yes. I can prove Isaac isn't responsible. Oh. By something so simple that Campbell completely overlooked it. Look. This is the modification schedule that caused all the disasters. You can see that the time and date the program was entered is notated on the readout. So? So Judith and I were both in the South Sahara rainforest doing an interview when the program was entered. We couldn't possibly have been there to do it ourselves. Unless you falsified the time and date? No, no. The system registers those automatically each time a program is entered. It's impossible to tamper with them. Dr. Campbell, by your own admission to the council, only three people have the knowledge and skill to have done this. It would appear that two of those people are cleared. Do you still stand by your statement? No. No, I was the only one who had the genius for such a task. John, why? Because I was tired of being a lackey to people who were incapable of appreciating the awesome power that they had at their fingertips. Appreciating power is one thing, abusing it is another. You could have ruled the world if you hadn't been so afraid. I wasn't. Take him away, Sergeant. Yes, Madam President. Well, you were right all along, Isaac. The computer wasn't malfunctioning. Nevertheless... Zeus is responsible for the destruction that was unleashed in the world. No, that was Campbell's doing. And ours. We became so complacent in the world we've rearranged that we've forgotten our own history. 
forgotten all the peaceful inventions that were twisted into machines of destruction. Perhaps we would be better served without such computers as Zeus. It's people that need guarding against, not computers. But we can never afford to have this happen again. If we've learned our lesson, it won't happen again. Perhaps if we remove the temptation, close Zeus down permanently. Ah, uh, it's too late for that. You see, we've changed the world to conform to specifications of a computer. I'm afraid we're dependent on Zeus now. Here comes spring. I know. Isn't the weather lovely? I'm talking about your dress. It's as soft and breezy as spring. Soft dressing is what spring is all about. And her dress is from Sears' expressive collection of dresses and skirt sets. Fluid lines and feminine designs. Fine detailing to shape and define in fabrics that move with you. Polyester or polyester and silk in subtle spring shades for quiet excitement. Misses, petite and half sizes in the dress department at most larger Sears retail stores. Understand you type fast. Yes. Accurate? Well... That's okay. You'll be typing on Sears' exclusive corrector electric typewriter with easy correction and more. It's Sears' best. Try typing Sears' corrector typewriter. Whoops. Now, first, Sears is S-E-A-R-S, not Z. So, backspace to the incorrect letter. Tap the correction key. Now the mistake is blocked out. Next, type the correct letter. Then proceed. Yes, Daddy. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you'll need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Sears, 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 where America shops. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Wrath of Zeus was written by Bob Borgen and Steve Sharon, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our stars were Mary Jane Croft, Vic Perrin, and Stephen Keats. Also heard were Marvin Miller, Peggy Weber, Shepard Menken, and Jack Carroll. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Joanne Thompson is production supervisor, and the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. This is Safety Vision, a quick and easy method for observing potential hazards in your home. Let's start by activating your safety scan. Carefully focus on your appliance cords and plugs. Check to see if they're damaged in any way. And if so, discontinue using the appliance. Next, you should focus on water. Check so that none of your plugged-in electrical appliances can be accidentally immersed in water or any other liquid. And avoid handling an electrical appliance with wet hands or when you are standing on a wet or damp floor. And finally, your safety scan should include checking for the UL label on all electrical appliances. That label indicates that the product design has been evaluated by safety engineers and complies with a nationally recognized safety standard. A public service message on behalf of Underwriters Laboratories and this station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. When you shop, remember that there's more than just the price of the product to consider. There's also the reputation of the seller. And if you have a question about reliability, check with your local Better Business Bureau. It's also good practice to check the warranty, what it does and doesn't cover. It's also a good idea to find out if you have to pay for shipping if the merchandise must be returned. And check to see what other charges, if any, you're going to have to pay. Another way to be a careful shopper is to know something about the policies of the store or the seller. 
Consumers should find out what the return policy is. Does the store give cash refunds? Does it provide credit on future purchases? Does it allow returns only on certain products and not on others? Look, you better get all the facts before you buy. This has been a consumer tip from your Better Business Bureau. Next Monday, Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. What's the matter? Uh, the stuff on my plate looks like what I was catching. It is. Grasshoppers? Grasshoppers. Ugh. Now that's a silly attitude. Eat them, they're good for you. So be sure and tune in next Monday to the Sears Radio Theater.